So to start off with, taking us back to the early 80s in our history lesson here is the first compact disc package I'm aware of that did not use the traditional plastic jewel case. Instead, it's a cardboard sleeve or case or a digipack, I guess. And this particular CD was hugely popular. It was a Christmas CD, and of course a lot of folks around that time in the early 80s uh, gotten their first CD player, so this was one of the first discs they got. A Mannheim Steamroller Christmas from a series called Fresh Air, spelled A-I-R-E. But this paper card package, or if it is a digipack, I guess it is, uh, it was kind of controversial. In fact, I remember one of the music fan magazines had an angry letter in it saying, if I get any CDs in cardboard sleeves, I'm going to demand a uh, a proper jewel case before I buy them. The content, well, Chip Davis, he cared a lot about the sound quality, and I guess that's why he chose the CD for this release, although his LPs of the time also were pressed very well and had excellent sound quality. I think he's a very good arranger for all of you who are fans of the Fresh Air series. There's quite a few in this series, but I think his Orchestral stuff is a lot better than his uh, pop rock stuff, which to me is a little bit corny. And you'll notice when we flip it over, not only is there a nice winter scene on one side, but there's an advert for uh, some of their LPs because they thought the LP was dying out at that point in time, and for a while it did. Here's a classical orchestral type CD from Tony Banks of Genesis. Now they wanted to dress this plain old jewel case up in a nice cardboard sleeve, which you know, gives a little bit more room for the artwork, but I'm not a huge fan of this method. Here's an early 80s CD with elegant packaging. Playing the Orchestra by Ryuichi Sakamoto it shows the versatility that creative folks can apply to the little plastic discs and their packaging. Ryuichi founded the electro-pop group Yellow Magic Orchestra in Japan in the late 1970s, uh, kind of based on what he heard with uh, Kraftwerk over in Germany. He also gained fame as an orchestral composer, and that's what this album is all about. Let's lift the lid here, and we see a CD in its jewel case there, but hey... There's a little mini three-inch digital disc nestled in the top of the box as well. Woohoo! Note the cool geometric design taking the place of a boring traditional label here. After a bit of effort getting the thing out, we see that beneath the main CD is, I don't know, maybe a window with multiple panes in it, and they, each one has been smashed by a little rock. <laughs> uh, if you shake the box, the pebbles inside it rattle a little bit. The CD itself was, um, it has this nice floral pattern on it. And we see echoes of the box design carried over to the track list sheet here. And uh, the credits for the many musicians looks like kind of a watercolor design. This album, playing the orchestra, is mostly film music by Ryuichi, including the theme from The Last Emperor that got him an Oscar award for Ryuichi Sakamoto and his co-writer Kong Su. It's gorgeous stuff if you like orchestral music or uh, want to just stick a toe in the water and see if you do like it. I almost hate to say this, but as late as 1990, those boring jewel cases were still the way to do CDs. But this handsome special edition of Fleetwood Mac's Behind the Mask, that's an exception. If you were lucky enough to find this version, it came in a box. You lift the lid to find the song list printed on translucent paper. Kind of classy, huh? Beneath that is a kind of frontispiece showing the band members. And, uh, hey, wait a minute... There's no Lindsey Buckingham. Where do he, he's not on the album? Hey, you, the one with the you, the one 
lift the jewel case from its cutout cradle and the disc is nestled into kind of a, an auto lift mechanism. It hands it to you. It's, it's less work for you, the fan. The mask, a uh, little mask drawing there, it's also embossed right onto the CD. The music, it's kind of a mediocre album if you ask me, but there are a couple of really great Christine McVie songs on it, so it's not a total loss, and it's beautiful, isn't it? Visit electrical-radio.com for hand-picked, commercial-free, eclectic music. <laughs> 